Hey class, it's Mr. M here at the golf course, so to speak, uh, mini golf course anyway, and we have a ball at point B and a hole at point H, imagine that, and I want to show you, and then you can demonstrate yourself, how you can use similarity at the golf course or mini golf course to uh, get some pretty cool shots. So to give you a rough idea of what's going to happen, and if you've ever played mini golf you probably know what's going to happen. Uh, you can't get to the ball from the ball to the hole directly, obviously, because of this uh, lake or blue blob. So what we need to do is to use the rails to our advantage in order to hit the ball directly into the hole. So it's going to appear something like that. So how do we figure out exactly where on the on the wall to bounce it off to get it directly in the hole? Well, let me show you. We're going to use an idea from physics called the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. So let me write these terms here for you. Angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Which basically suggests when a force, whether it's a ball, a ray of light, a laser, hits a reflective object, then the angle at which it hits is reflected in the opposite direction. Which, which makes common sense if you've ever shown a light uh, into a mirror. So let's see this in play. The first thing you want to do is to measure how far the hole is from the, ball, from the wall you want to bounce it off of. So I have a grid here, but you can use a ruler uh, in your case. Uh, and make sure you measure your distances perpendicularly, meaning directly at a 90 degree angle against the wall. So here, from H to the bouncing wall is 5 units. One, two, three, four, five. Well, likewise, the ball is four units from that same wall. Again, if you're doing this on, on an index card, for example, then of course you'll have to measure with the ruler, but the same principles hold true. Just make sure you use the same units, like centimeters. Well, what we want to create is a pair of similar triangles, which means they're the exact same triangle, simply in different sizes. And as you can tell, the sizes are different. One's four, and one's five. So how do we do this? Well, if our triangles are going to be similar, then we know that this piece and this piece are going to be in certain proportion, right? Because they're sort of matching parts of the triangles. So the ratio of the small triangle, which is from the ball is, to the large triangle, which is where the hole is, is going to be a ratio of four to five. That's going to be our scale factor or our similarity ratio. Well, notice that both of our triangles are going to lay against this wall here. So the real question then becomes, how long is this wall? Well, if you're using an index card, you can measure uh, with your ruler. Uh, but I'm going to use the grid here to my advantage. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units in between. So these two triangles have to share those 9 units in a certain ratio. Now you could split it right down the middle, four and a half, four and a half, sure. But notice that these triangles are not uh, the same triangle. One has a side length of four and the other has a side length of five. So that same ratio needs to hold true when we subdivide this nine units. That'll tell us where on the wall to bounce. So to divide nine into a ratio of four to five, well that's very easy. Four on one side and five on the other. Now your numbers may not be quite as easy, but again, the same principle holds true. You find your similarity ratio, which again was found by measuring these distances, and then you subdivide the distance along the wall, or the line of reflection in this case, more geometrically. You subdivide that distance according to the same ratio. So I'm going to go four units from the ball's point of view to make a point right there, and I'll call that point R for reflection. So if you have four on this side, you'll have five on that side. Fair enough. We still have nine in total. Four and five are subdivided so that the ratio from this side here to this side over here, the first ones we measured, is the same ratio as what we just divided the nine into. Well, now it becomes quite clear where we bounce our ball. With our excellent putting skills, we aim in that direction. And voila, the ball should go directly into the hole. Now, I neglected to mention something earlier. 
when you measured your units from the ball to the wall and the hole to the wall, and typically when you measure anything, you want to make sure that it's level, which is to say that it is at a 90 degree angle with uh, what you're measuring against. So those two angles are both 90, and I think that's just also kind of common sense when you measure something. Well, the idea we mentioned earlier about the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection occurs right here at point R. And in fact, that's why I called it point R. The angle at which the ball hits the wall is reflected in the opposite direction toward the hole. If our ratio was not exactly the same from 4 to 5, then those angles would not be the same. Or the angles would be the same, but rather they wouldn't go to the wall, to the hole, which is of course what you want. So this tells us that in similar triangles, you have at least two angles that are the same. And in fact, if all you have is two angles that are the same, then you know the two triangles must be similar. So these angles match, and these angles match, and therefore these two triangles are similar triangles. And there you go. That's how you use similar triangles to help you out at the golf course, or mini golf course.